in this video. This starts with string method in Python. So let's say we had a string here, such as Don Cherry, and we wanted to know, does this string start with Don? In other words, is the first name of this person Don? Well, how would we do that? I would say the easiest way to do that is with the starts with string method. And what you want to do is pass your substring or your argument to it like this. So we would pass Don and run that. And we know that that is true, that Don Cherry does in fact start with Don. And of course, if you were to pass something else, just a random string, when we run that, we're going to find that to be false. So that's the basics of the starts with string method. And we're going to go into much more detail and examples in this video. But let's start with a look at the docs. So the starts with string method takes one mandatory argument called prefix and then two optional arguments called start and end. So this starts with string method is going to return true if the sting string starts with the prefix, otherwise it's going to return false. So basically starts with is going to return a boolean of either true or false based on the arguments that you pass to it. Now one interesting thing about this prefix is that it can actually be a tuple of prefixes. So basically you can either pass a string here or you can pass a tuple of strings, otherwise a list of potential strings. And I'll show you some examples of what that looks like. And then of course we have the optional start and end arguments, um, which basically works like slice notation in Python. So if you're good with slice notation, then this is going to make a lot of sense. And we'll look at some examples for that as well. I guess what's important to note is that start is going to start at the beginning of the string and then end is going to stop comparing at that end position. So let's start by passing strings to the starts with method. And so let's say we have our Don Cherry string and then we can pass Don to it, right? We can pass a string to it and we know that to be true. Um, of course, you cannot pass an integer. Um, you cannot pass a I don't know, a dictionary, you cannot pass a list, right? It's either going to be a string um, or it could be a tuple. Now, since we're focusing on strings, um, we know that we could pass, say, Don Cherry to, to Don Cherry. And we know that to be true because Don Cherry does, in fact, start with Don Cherry. But if we shorten that down to, say, I don't know, Cherry, we know that that's going to be false, that Don Cherry does not start with Cherry. Um, but it does start with, say, D-O, right? So we know that that's going to return true. Um, we could pass, say, D to it, and we know that to be true. If we pass a lowercase d, then that's going to be false, because this is going to be case sensitive. So just make sure when you're passing a string that you're taking case into consideration. Next, let's pass a tuple and see what that looks like. So here we're uh, going to be want to pass a tuple. And so that's going to be, let's say we throw Dawn in here. Let's say we throw Python in here. And so this is a tuple, right? We have this syntax of having an opening and closing bracket. And when we run this, this is going to return true. And you might be wondering, hold on a second, Python uh, Don Cherry does not start with Python, so how is this true? Well, basically, you only need one string in the tuple to be true in order for this to return true, right? So we could add something else that's falsy, just something random, and this is still going to return true. But as soon as we remove uh, Don here, as soon as we move that other string, uh, now it's going to return false. But if we just add something back, uh, that does happen to be true, let's say D, then this is going to return true. So basically, you only need one in the tuple to be true in order for it to return true, right? Next, I wanted to look at variables. And I wanted to show you that, say, the variable could be on either end. And what I mean by that is we can assign A as Don Cherry, and we could say B is Don. And we could say a dot starts with and pass, say, Don here, right? And so this is going to be true. We're using a as our string, um, basically as a variable there. 
and we could pass b as a variable here. So you can use a variable either uh, for that you know, original string or for the substring, and you can do either or. So uh, what did we look at here? We did uh, that there. Uh, we could also you know, pass Don Cherry here and you know, use a variable just on the end. So it could either be for the A or for the B or both. All of that is going to work fine with a variable. And we can even pass a tuple. So we could say we don, uh, we could say hockey, right? So this is a tuple. And we know that to be true by checking the type. And we can see that this is a tuple. And now we can come back to our command and we could do A ends with C. And this is going to return true because in C we have Don. And if we say reassign C, and we removed Don and made it, I don't know, Donald, when we run this again, that's going to return false. So basically just showing you that you can use variables however you want here, makes it much more flexible. And this includes with tuples. All right, so now that you're comfortable with the prefix, let's start looking at the start optional argument, right? And so just reading this again, we see that with the optional start, test string beginning at that position. So this is sort of the beginning position of the uh, original string. So let's say our original string was Don Cherry. What if we only wanted to start at Cherry? How would that work, right? Well, using slice notation, we could see that if we wanted to start at C, I think we'd be starting at position four. Yep, so that is going to be cherry. Of course, if we start at say position two, uh, we get something else. If we start at position six, we get something else. So if we wanted just to get cherry, then we want to start at position four. So how would we capture this in our starts with string method example? So we know Don Cherry, right? So we can do a dot starts with and so that's the normal way. But what if we want to start with cherry? Then we could actually start with position four. So right now that's going to be false because of what we're passing. But if I pass say cherry here, now it's going to be true. And actually going back to our original um, AB example, which we know to be true. So right, Don is in Don Cherry. The base case of this is passing zero. So the, the default is zero. This is as if, this zero is as if you never passed anything. But as soon as you start passing one, then that's going to be false because you're comparing something else. If you are passing the one here, that would be the same thing as basically doing this. So one semicolon, and now you have on Sherry. So that's what you'd be comparing. So let's just say I created a new variable and we'll call it on Sherry, okay? So we'll actually grab it. So this is on Sherry. So we have Don and then we have our on Sherry, right? And so let's go back to A and let's do A starts with D. And we're starting at position one, or actually let's start at position zero and this will be false. And then if we start at position one, that's going to be true because we know that uh, on cherry and on cherry, right? So hopefully that's starting to make sense with the starts with and how it's really all about the slice notation and making sure that you grab the right thing. Um, so this is really helpful, right? If what you want to check is cherry, so say your original string is Don Cherry, but all you want to know is that it starts with cherry, then, you know, slice notation and this, um, this start uh, optional parameter is going to be your best friend. Next, let's look at the end optional argument. And so just going back to our docs quick, we can see that the optional argument end, we stop comparing string at that position. So what that means is let's say we had A is Don Cherry. And if we wanted to stop at a particular position, um, then it would be the equivalent of doing something like this. Um, we can stop at three, we can stop at four. If we stop at 10, then we basically get the whole string. But if we stop at seven, then we just get Don Che. And so this is the original string that we're talking about. 
we're really talking about our A string. And so when we're talking about the end, we're talking about the end of this original A string. And if we only wanted to compare, say, Don Che, then what we would do is we would do starts with, and we could do Don Che, and then we can do zero, and then we can do seven. And this is going to be true. But when you start getting smaller than that, then that's no longer going to work anymore. Um, because, you know, A4 is going to be a smaller string than Don Che. You'd actually have to reduce this down to make it true again. Um, so basically this start and this end optional argument, you're performing slice notation on A. You're performing slice notation on that original string. Next, I wanted to give a real world example. And so what I did is actually create a list of names. So we got four strings here. Uh, we got two people named Don, and then we got two other people named Dave. And so what if we just wanted to get all the people named Don? How would we do that? Well, we would want to make a Don list, right? And so this is going to be an empty list for now. And then we're going to want to loop over our names list and basically add everyone named Don to the Don list. So how would we do that? So I'm thinking we would do for n in names, right? If n dot starts with um, Don, right? If n starts with Don, then we can do Don list dot append n, right? And we can run this. And now when we check the Don list, we have two names. We have both of our guys named Don. And I hope that makes perfect sense. We basically checked if the strings started with Don, basically seeing if their first name was Don, very similar to our first example in the opening. And then we appended that to our list, and now we have our new list of Don. So I hope that that was a very practical example, right? Before we had our names, and now we have our Don list, and we were able to sort of filter that down by iterating over it and checking things with the starts with string method. So in this video, we gave some practical examples. Uh, we looked at the prefixes as both a string or a tuple. Um, we looked at slice notation with start and end. We looked at a real world example. This has been the starts with string method. And I've hoped you've enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.